spiritually. So, I just need about five questions. Ask me on anything about the girl you want to get married to. It should be the first one. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 it should be the first question. <laughs> I was just talking with one of the brothers because I was after the session. I was just talking with one brother. I said that sister that you're always talking with is it your sister? I said no, I have a brother. There is a vision. There is a vision. Amen. So, you know, in those days, when I was in the twenties, I I wanted to ask a question. You know, when I see some maybe great servant of God, I just wanted an opportunity to ask a question. Hello. When I see ministers coming from other nations and conferences, you know, I'll never forget in the twenties. Hey, 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 please. When conference, okay, thank you. I'll never forget. Do you Elias did that? Do you know Elias did that in South Africa? Elias. Elias did that. In those days when I was in my twenties, a preacher came from South Africa. Now this man lived me to dream. Ha! My brother. I saw. And yesterday, that in those days, he was also in his 40s like me. This man was. He. He. My God. He would preach the gospel. And you know, Nyanka, he loved me. Oh my God. He made me to dream. I don't know him, okay? No, 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 no. He is he's a show off. No, no, not that show off. No, 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 no. It's stylish, it's stylish. That he's a kind of, you know. It's elegant. Oh, very elegant. elegant. Yeah. Extremely elegant. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, when I call him, you know, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. I naturally love to wear this with these things, you know. He was, and the way he would preach with power, with precision, in the anointing. I said, wow, I want to, I want to preach the gospel like that. So I, I wanted that kind of opportunity just to speak with him to ask, what are your secrets? Yeah. What do you do? So I'll never forget, one day I went to pick him in his hotel and I was just asking him some questions. Because it was my dream. What he was living is what I wanted to live. And it's what I'm already living today at our first. Your life is looking for trouble. So is there somebody that just want to, or maybe I'm wasting my time, is there somebody want to ask me a question? A question? Is, do you have a question in your heart? You want to, you know, something, maybe not about, maybe something, anything about life, about something in your mind, something you want to be clear about, something that, don't be, don't be ashamed, don't be shy. It might be some question that you think that this, when I ask this question, this is what that will begin to look like. Okay. I don't How do you know that she is the one? She is the one. How many of you are interested in that question? Okay, if you say you don't want to be here, tell me how do you know she is a woman. <laughs> but tell me. You don't have to be here. Not because you see young people, see that we are sitting there, see you know. Not because they say they don't have pressure. But they are the one in the problem. How do you know he is the guy? That guy that just spoke to them, how do you know he is the guy? <laughs> so, but when a guy comes and supports you, how do you know he's the right one? Do you, do you have the So it's just to tell you that many a times you, you, you say you don't have depression, but you have a lot of things that have no answers in your mind. Amen. Amen. And many a times uh, these are privileges too for you to be able to come out to get some clarity. So I need five five questions. Somebody want a question? God bless you. Thank you. 
Yes, question. Yes, question. Question. Okay. Okay, let me start. Let me start. Okay. The question, first question is How do you know she's the one? Who, who likes the question? Because most people will say, okay, um, uh, I have a vision. God has shown me you're my wife. The first advice is if someone comes and tells you, I've had a vision, God spoke to me. I saw in the dream, I was, the rain was falling, you had an umbrella. And then I came under the umbrella.
Say it again. Spirit of discernment. You want to know more about the spirit of discernment? You have a question in your mind? Okay. Yes. Um, I want to ask a question. If a man decided not to get married because uh, maybe his first marriage he did not enjoy the marriage and never his mind not to marry him, is it the wrong thing for him? Is it the wrong thing? That's it. Okay. If a man decides not to get married, is it okay? That's how I, 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 I did my, 
I never had a vision where I saw my wife, she met me, and God said, This is your wife. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's what you are waiting for.
God has developed us into something else. Amen. But now, what of me? The same way I feel for you is the same way you feel for me. Not that I'm in a relationship, I'm the only one calling. You don't call me. There is a problem. It must be reciprocal. I, I call you, you call me. I call you, you call me. I text you, you text me. The price 
is filled with what? Purity. Purity. Huh? Purity. When you keep that price, it will help you in the cause of people. No matter the temptation that will rise up against you, you will be able to fight. Because you have kept a pure spirit. But if you don't keep that pure spirit, there are some battles you might not be able to win. Because the devil is the accuser of prayer. Hello. Yeah. The devil is what? The accuser of prayer. The accuser of prayer. Keep yourself pure. Amen. Amen. Receive that grace to you. Amen. 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 Receive that grace for purity. Amen. Amen. Receive that grace to keep yourself. Even if you have made a mistake and you slept with someone, you can renew your vow with God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, what did I say? Renew you know your vow and say, Father, I make a vow. I will. Each time I talk, and you know, to be able to keep the vow, do you know what I did? Should I tell you what I did? Yes. Do you want to hear? Yes. Are you interested? Yes. The way you're asking is asking. I said, God, if I if I sleep with a lady, kill me.
because your mind is coming from the place of heaven.
Lost infiltration is, is when you target the individual because of the assets. <laughs> because of what you see. Uh, when you are attracted to the physique exclusively. But you don't get me wrong. By the way, you should be attracted to the person that you love. Physical attraction is not the most important thing, but it's important. Uh, don't get married to someone that you are ashamed of. Don't get married to someone that you cannot stand. Um, of course, don't get married to them out of pity. Or with the hope that they will change, because in all likelihood, they will either not change or they will change for the worst. So if what you see, there are things that you cannot live with. If you have game changers in front of you, don't proceed. Deal breakers. If it's a, for some people, how much someone talks is a deal breaker. For some people, even the way someone chews food is a deal breaker. For some people, the way the person looks physically is a deal breaker. And people have their specs. Their preferences. If you like them slim and tender, and uh, I want to say that politically correctly. <laughs> uh, if you like them slim, slim and tender, that's the taste that God has given you. To the best of their ability, wait till you get your slim and tender. But know that after she has gone through one or two or three deliveries, she will not be as slim. And as tender as she was when you first met her. Uh, if you like them six pack, um, know that they will eventually develop a one pack. <laughs> <laughs> so if a seal, six pack is a deal breaker for you, then get married right to a gym instructor because they are the only ones that stay six pack for a very long time. If it's a desirable trait, then not big deal. But if it's a, I can't stand a man in the portrait. Then you know that it's you are you have to streamline your choices to to buy it because most men connections will ultimately change physiologically. Uh, so there is so, so there's that aspect that our, our our fathers in the Lord encourage us to understand. If there's something about the person that you don't like, that they are short when you wanted them to be tall, or that they are tall when you wanted them to be short, you wanted them to be sleep, don't Proceed. Like what you see, and like it enough to be proud of, of him or her. If there's any aspect about their physique, phys physique and their physical receptivity breakup for you, then uh, you probably need to keep waiting for the Lord to bring the right person. Psychological compatibility are high risk relationships. Um, for a variety of reasons. For a variety of reasons because women tend to age faster, they have a shorter biological clock. A man doesn't really have a biological clock from them. In terms of structural authority and the man's, the woman's submitting, it's just a lot easier to submit. to 
they order their body lotion from, I don't know, from overseas. They spend like seven grand on their body lotion. They spend like 5K on their perfumes and stuff like that. They, they come from a certain social class where normality to them has been defined by a certain level of expenditure and for them that is normal. Getting ready to such a person when your salary is 10 grand, you will get a heart attack if she goes and buys her body lotion for 7 grand because that is 70% of your salary. She will not see anything wrong in what she has done because that is what her father got her used to. She will not necessarily think that she's doing something wrong. She just bought the body lotion that she was using before you met her. And she is not trying to upgrade. In fact, she's trying to just maintain her standards. So I use the example of body lotion to say that you fight on very little things. Very little things. Just because from an upbringing perspective, they usually and they used to enjoy it, there was nothing absolutely wrong with that. They used to do tin fish, they used to sail, and they used to be okay. When it comes to the church, and we saw this brain of my prophet, when some brothers walk into the church and then they say, No, we are all, of course, we are not in the love of Christ Jesus, we all love the Lord, we are all one in Christ. And then they start. Going for sister Jara, like he said, that you are not in my class. And his brothers feel insulted and they feel like this person has to for the man. Because we are all one in Christ, then they should put something in his class. And in a perfect world, that's what it's supposed to be. Like marriage is one of those areas where you want to be as practical as possible. If you happen to find someone that is simple and hard, So, so I use an example to say 
say that class is relative. Of course, there will be people for whom all of that will not matter. But you cannot impose that on the on the individual. And if my father has brought me home, yeah, he used to shopping for myself for 25 days. There's absolutely nothing wrong with me. There's a guy out there who will get married to me, who can shop for me. So there's that compatibility that we must take care of here. That is a question that is class and that is it's, it's, uh, it's spiritual. As far as the choice is concerned, man of God, I give back to you. You said that there are three levels of weaknesses that you bring about. That is when after you have chosen. After you have chosen, you want the weakness of your family. Marriage typically is families bringing their children together to get married. The weakness of your family is the approval of your biological parents or your biological authorities or whoever is in your life that represents that freedom. When I was much younger and serious, I used to think that if your parents are not in agreement with your relationship, you can just go ahead. The older you get and the more you see life, nine out of ten of those relationships are in nine men. Like the prophet said, if you are falling in love, and your father or your mother says, no, fall out of love. Bless the person, release them and let them go. Parental authority, it's very crucial, very important. Because there is a blessing that they, they carry and that they speak over you that sort of sustains you in life. The approval, the second level of approval, of course, the first person that needs to be convinced and persuaded about is the two people involved that this is the will of God, and this is what we want. The second level of approval is once you think that you are in love with each other, you are meant for each other, and you voice the idea to those who are natural parental authority over you, and they give you their go ahead. That's the second sign of approval. Some parents initially say no, and eventually say yes. Some parents initially say no, especially the parents of the, of the woman. It, actually, it's something on both sides. Some people let go of their daughters with difficulty. Some people struggle with the idea. Some people want to just see how serious you are. There are some other people for whom they know is vehement. It's like, this is a no, and I don't want to hear about this. Unfortunately, some of those no's are very, they don't make sense. In our day and age, even in the church, some people say say no because of cultural reasons. She's a zoo. She's a tosser. She's a vendor. Mm -hmm. She's from the northwest, mm. or from the southwest, or she's black, or she's white, or she's colored, <laughs> or she's Chinese. <laughs> Sometimes some of those responses from the parents will not make sense. In fact, sometimes the parents will not be able to explain to you why they say no. But my personal advice, and this is me speaking now from experience, is if they say no, Give it time, pray about it. If you come back to them, they still say no. Give it time, pray about it. And you come back to them, they say no, move on. Release the person, you know. Because only time will get you to eventually understand why is it that God is intervening in, the, in, that, in, that, in that dimension. And, and of course, so, so they, and then the third weakness obviously is the, the, the weakness of the spiritual service, you know. Now, your spiritual parents have, depending on the kind of context in which you find yourself, the spiritual parents, they carry you on their heart. They carry you on their heart. And God most often speaks to them concerning you. So, although in the broader scheme of things, and depending on the kind of relationship that you have with them, when you have a spiritual parent and someone that you hold in high esteem, take their opinion about your relationship very seriously. It's not a perfect science, but 9 out of 10 times, God is going to speak to you through them. For the simple fact that when you are in love, your emotions are involved, your spiritual senses are compromised. It's extremely difficult for you to hear God with clarity about something that you really like. I'll give you a case in my own example again. When I finally met my wife and, you know what was my prayer, I told God. I can't go back to say, God, is this your way? 
I went and told her, Lord, I met this girl. You know, my heart has already gone to this person. If for some reason this is not the right person, in your mercy, bring it back. Because as far as I'm concerned, yes. the plane has left the airport already. <laughs> My emotions were already involved. I was already captivated by this person. I already liked what I saw. I was so compromised that I didn't want to ask the Lord again, is this your will? Because whatever other answer I would get, it was not the answer I was expecting, I would have reviewed the answer. Because <laughs> I was already in love with what I, I saw, who was something for me. Now, in that compromised state, the weakness of the parent and the weakness of the spiritual authorities is the thing that sort of sealed and sealed the, the confirmation for me. Because I then positioned myself in a place where my spirit, my spiritual parents were seeing us, our spiritual parents and our natural parents were seeing us, and they gave us their approval and they gave us their go ahead. And so it made it a lot easier for me to be able to say, okay, Lord, I love this person. My mother thinks it's a great idea. My mother thinks it's a great idea. Our spiritual parents are like, go for it. So we were covered in three dimensions uh, as far as that is concerned. So I just want to leave that out there, the compatibility issue. Mm -hmm. The social compatibility, the temperamental compatibility, the psychological compatibility, the maturity question, the physical maturity, the psychological maturity that I have to stress, deal with challenges, deal with circumstances, and of course the weakness of those who are who are around you and those who are the, those that matter to you uh, in life. And then in all of that, I want to conclude by saying timing and timing. It's one of the most critical ingredients as far as success in this aspect of your life is concerned. I think it's Solomon says in the book of Songs of Solomon. I urge you, the daughters of Jerusalem, do not awaken love before its time. You all are at an age where you have emotions that you have to manage. The key to having success in this aspect of your life is getting into the right relationship at the right time. Because on the one hand, while we are asking you to set yourself apart and keep yourself pure and uh, determine your heart not to defy yourself and take responsibility over yourself, on the other hand, we want to see you have been married. And how are you going to get married? You need to find a guy. You need to meet the guy, you need to fall in love with the guy, and you guys need to eventually get married. So on the one hand, we are saying, hey, slow down, apply your brakes. On the other hand, we are saying, we eventually go very to pull off that brakes and come here, accelerate, and set oh, that. Yeah. You know? So between that, apply the brakes and take the foot off the brakes, it's a question of getting the timing right. Getting the timing right. Wow. You know? And as far as timing is concerned, it's a function of maturity and it's a function of means. In a sense, in a very broad sense, a function of means. Spiritual maturity, a man that knows where he's going to or has a vision about his life, is busy pursuing that vision. Nine out of ten times has the maturity to be able to take care of another woman. A guy that's still trying to figure out life doesn't know where he's heading to. It's no, so no, no. Don't get married to a person that doesn't have a vision. Don't get married to a person that doesn't have a vision. Mm. If the guy doesn't have a vision, he's gone before you are visionized. Before you are visionized. Because you'll be coming to help you to accomplish what? Practically speaking, um, it, and it really, really depends on person to person. My spiritual father used to tell us that marriage for a man is the ability to pay bills. So you are taking all the responsibilities and the charge of another, another human being. And it is not a function of the, how much you have in your bank account. It is responsibility. As long as you are not receiving pocket allowance from your parents, because you cannot take care of your wife based on your parents' pocket allowance and giving you. It's like, that's your father's wife, not your wife. As long as you are in the position, of, and it's not really, even if you are living in the moon, let it be your, your moon, your shy. So, so when we talk about responsibility and the need to pay bills, it's not about the wealth, it's not about the amount of money, it's about a sense of 
I have enough income coming in at the end of the month to take care of myself. And I say enough income for some people to be a thousand rands. For some people to be 10,000 rands. It's not about the amount. My life has been practically in such a way that I'm responsible. I'm responsible. I have a roof over my head. I have a space where I'm bringing this girl to because in the very basic sense, from a masculine uh, hierarchy of this perspective, every woman needs privacy. Every woman needs a space she can call and command as her kitchen. Mm -hmm. Even if it's such a corner of the corner of the room, she's a CEO of that corner. Mm -hmm. You know, she has her stove there, her pots there, her plates there, her spoons there. She commands how those pots get arranged, what gets cooked, and all of that. As long as you're in a position to provide that, and you have the responsibility to be able to take care of yourself independently, then you have the structure to be able to share your life with someone. However, do not bring someone into a mukuku whose expectation is not to be in a mukuku. So do not get someone to come down to your level because of love. If she accepts to follow you to your shop and to cook at the corner of the room, praise the Lord. If she doesn't, there's nothing wrong with her. She's just not the person that is required for you at that stage in your life. You know? So the man should have responsibility, be able to take care of himself and take care of the second person. And of course, at their age, it's a shared responsibility. But it's always better if you have children. I mean, the prophet told us at the beginning, he was in a space in his life where uh, he did not have enough. But he had an allowance. He had two dollars that he could budget on. And the fact that he had two dollars made it difficult to live that on two dollars. But he had, he lived a, a two dollar life. I'm mm -hmm. trying to explain this. Yeah. I'm trying to explain this so you should understand. He was already a responsible man that had an income, although very low, but he was already taking care of himself and taking care and discharging his responsibilities with that amount. No matter how small he was, he was taking care of himself, involved in ministry, executing the vision. He was in a space in that way to accommodate another woman because the woman was not just coming to keep him companionship, but was to join him in what he was busy doing already. Was to join him to provide support to a vision that was being executed. So he was mature in so many respects, just in between him and the amount of money that was supposed to be in his life, that he was taking care of himself and was ready to receive the woman in his life. God brought someone that supported him. So that, that maturity and that responsibility is absolutely important. And what for the ladies? Know that the ladies who are hitting third year, you're already crossing into that market space. Where, and of course, you know that when you come off campus, your suitors are going to expand. Campus guys are broke guys. For the most part of them. So they are not really competition. When you come off campus and you find yourself in a work environment, you just join a group of bigger, uh, a larger group of suitors. Guys who have been working for 10, 15, 40 years and set an established in life and are looking for a suitable life partner. So for most of you, this is next year or in two years or in three years. And they will come your way. They will come and ask for your hand. So you need to start then preparing yourself to be that kind of woman that is, uh, to be a wife. And to know the kind of wife that you want to be. And to know the kind of man that is going to fit in the picture of the kind of one that you want to become. So that when he eventually comes, you know that, okay, this is what I prayed for. This is what I expect. This is how I'm going to fit in this space. This is how I can make this man help him accomplish his dream. So, let's get a little bit of
Okay, so let's 